It's a pretty grim landmark, but what does it tell us about how this virus has been, you know, you know changing and moving through the U.S.? Well, you know, um, these, these numbers that are coming up are, are relatively high, particularly compared to other countries that have been able to control the COVID-19 outbreaks and get their case numbers, those are daily case numbers, down to much more manageable levels. What we're seeing also across the country is hotspots flare up and then they settle down into small, lower numbers of cases, and then other states come up in terms of there being hot spots. Um, this is expected. You know, this virus is not going away. It's present within our community. As one relie relieves some of the public health interventions, you expect to see some cases coming up. This is where, though, the testing and the contact tracing um, mechanisms that should have been put in place uh, would be able to be called upon to try to limit the spread of the virus, to identify specifically the people that are at risk for infection based on exposures, and try to um, quarantine them so that the um, interventions that are needed to lower the virus spread um, can be more targeted as opposed to being across the entire state, across the entire country. Because the U.S. is so vast, do we need to look at it differently to almost any other country because a lot of the precautions or not are taken at state level? And what can you tell us about some of the Midwestern states, North Dakota, South Dakota, and Iowa, which, you know, you know increases are quite significant there? Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, public health is best done at the local level, and cities, counties, states are the ones that really have to fine-tune policies to make sure that they're being optimized to what's going on within those particular regions. That, that's not to say that national leadership isn't important, because it absolutely is. One has to provide the framework, one has to provide the resources for the states, the counties, and the cities to be able to effectively uh, institute the public health measures needed to uh, reduce COVID-19 uh, spread. What you're seeing, though, is a, a very uh, different response to the COVID-19 outbreak based on the state in particular uh, that you're in. Some states take this incredibly seriously and institute rather strong public health interventions early on. Other states try to take other approaches um, that allows for more virus spread in the community. Um, that's the drawback of, of, of having the, the, the local um, public health entities make some of these decisions is sometimes those decisions are not solely driven by public health, but they can be driven by political influences. Can we avoid a second wave, given that we're going into the winter months and that schools are reopening, people are going back to work? Yeah, I, I think it's absolutely possible to avoid a large second wave. Um, we know the public health interventions, the contact tracing, and the testing, and we have a good sense of how those things can be applied. We've seen multiple countries be able to control levels of COVID-19 in much more manageable levels. Um, we need to have the public as well as the government commitment uh, to institute these types of interventions to make sure that we can keep case numbers low. The winter months may bring a surge of not only COVID-19 because people are being inside more, they're coming in close contact with each other some more. We're also seeing other respiratory viruses that may be making a, um, an increase um, this fall and winter. So all of these things really um, highlight the fact that we need to spend the time now to make sure that the public health interventions that we want to put in place are there and that we can effectively monitor and keep case numbers down as we move into the winter months. Um, and very quickly, would a second wave be less deadly? Well, the medical infrastructure around the world, but particularly in the U.S., has really learned a lot about how to care for public for COVID-19 patients. So certainly I think the outlook for severe cases is looking much better. You can see the death rates are, are dropping across the U.S. as physicians have learned what treatments work, what treatments don't, and what time to institute those treatments. So I think we're getting better at that. But that's not to say that we shouldn't focus on reducing the number of cases, because the fewer cases that come to hospitals, the better the care is going to be for those people, because it's going to um, be less of a stress on the medical infrastructure and the limited resources that we do have to deal with this.